wonder... When... And... Why... Countries will rebuild their infrastructure. I mean, <laughs> that's a weird, weird question. Uh, I guess it, it's uh, different for every situation. So what I'm thinking is, right, like the American highway system probably needs a rebuilding. But like, let's say the uh, the bullet train network in Japan. At what point is it like so old that you have to rebuild it? Probably not yet, right? Do you like wait until there's new technology? And what would the new technology be? Especially since hmm, some types of infrastructure is you only have one, like a like a highway network. You really only have one because <laughs> having two redundant highway networks is kind of a waste of money. But that's not true for all infrastructure, right? I'm thinking about internet infrastructure. If you lay an extra cable, that's more bandwidth. So I'm in New Zealand, there are a number of undersea cables that connect New Zealand with the rest of the internet. And every now and then they'll just build a new one. And then every now and then they would like decommission one of the old ones, if it's too old. And that like that that makes sense and that's kind of easier to do because the software is kind of independent from the hardware right the hardware of the cables is not like it doesn't determine what kind of 
information flows across the uh, the cable. Whereas trains, the hardware and the software come in a package. If you change the trains, you might also have to change the tracks. And if you change the tracks, you might also have to change the trains. I mean, you could build it in a way that so that they're compatible, of course, but... Like, not everything can be made compatible. For example, a faster train on an older track might not work because the track needs to be higher quality or like you know built to tighter tolerances in order to support the higher speeds or whatever it is Maybe that's what we need to do with the uh, maglev trains, the magnetic levitation trains. We need to figure out how to have a track system where conventional trains and maglevs can use the same track. No, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> I, just, I just realized how stupid that was halfway through the sentence. <laughs> Because the maglevs are so much faster, you just like, like the the slow trains will just block the fast trains all the time. <laughs> I just realized how stupid that was. But I mean, that's what I mean. Like, how how do you justify switching to maglev if you have to like rebuild the whole thing from scratch? It's not like you can like add a bit to the existing network and then everything is everything works for everything else like the internet cables like you add a cable everything just it's just a little faster you just get more bandwidth right that's not no problems like imagine if somebody told you you have to rip out all the old internet cables and then replace all of them with the new internet cables And then you have to change all the software to use the new cables. <laughs> like, <laughs> nobody would do it. Literally, nobody would do it. So, anyway, so high-speed trains and conventional trains are just like two completely separate things. Technically, you can run conventional trains on high-speed tracks, but if you do that, you block all the high-speed trains. <laughs> because the, the conventional train is slow, right? <laughs>
Alright, so there's less to fill in on this side because there's already an island here. But there's still plenty to fill in. Harver says, regretting the choice in Buttress style yet. No Harver, no regrets. <laughs> Never. <laughs> My only regret is I don't use more concrete blocks. <laughs> Sometimes you have to put in the work <laughs> to make good architecture. <laughs> Interesting later on. How it says you get a concrete block and you get a concrete block. Everyone gets that's right. Everyone gets a concrete block. I mean, this this is the, the boring stuff, right? Once we get above water and we get to the suspension bridge plot, it's going to be more interesting. Although even that's going to be massive.
I mean, if you like. Building dams. If you like, watch people build dams. And by people, I mean like enormous construction companies. <laughs> it's just a whole lot of concrete. <laughs> Pour concrete for weeks and weeks and weeks. <laughs> and then just slowly build up a giant mass of concrete. I mean, you, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? <laughs> Sometimes you just need a giant mass of concrete. <laughs> Pyramids. I mean, the pharaohs had it right, they just had a bunch of slaves. <laughs> actually, that's not, that's not historically accurate. They weren't actually slave slaves. I mean, they were peasants, so you didn't have to pay them very much. But they were actually paid a fair wage for the time, which wasn't very much. But they weren't slaves slaves, they were like a... cheap labor. <laughs> Building the pyramids. And they were kind of skilled too, which is kind of like funny thing to say, but like after a while you get good at pulling giant blocks of stone. <laughs> like you figure out how to do it efficiently. So they were like skilled labor building the uh, the Egyptian pyramids. But it wasn't, <laughs> they weren't paid very much. <laughs> but they were paid a fair wage for the time. Like in the movies, like you have like people whipping the slaves to, to pull the stone. They weren't actually any whips. 